أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والعاقبة للمتقين ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك وسلم رب الشح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Praises are due to Allah We praise Allah and we glorify Him we put our trust and our reliance in Him in all of our fears, and we testify that there is no deity deserved to be worshipped with Allah. And Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is the final messenger of Allah that was sent as a mercy to all mankind. Beloved friends, brothers and sisters in Islam, brothers and sisters in humanity, I greet you all with the greetings of peace and love. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of Allah be with all of you. Yesterday, by Allah's permission, we spoke about the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we highlighted the levels, and we spoke about the levels of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the importance of uh, showing our love for Him. And also we spoke about ma'rifat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, through his attributes and also through his af'al. And today we would like to continue our important discourse on uh, the requisites for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is one of two matters. There are two matters when both of them is actually com combined in one of the individuals of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation, he will be at the extent of completeness. And the first requisite is Al Husn wal Jamal. Al Husn and Jamal actually means goodness and splendor. Al Jamal means splendor and also it means uh, beauty. The second requisite is Al Ihsan and Al Ijmal. And Al Ihsan here uh, actually means goodness or beneficence or uh, display of mercy. And also Al Ijmal means radiance. Al Jamal, for example, beauty and splendor is something that is naturally loved. Generally, people love things that are beautiful and splendor in its nature, since people love things that is naturally deemed as uh, as as good and as for al ijmal and radiance it is like the jamal of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most high in his extensive wisdom and also uh, his unprecedented uh, creation and also the beautiful characteristics and attributes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, this is something brothers and sisters that is uh, perceived with with insight and basira and not with one's eyesight. A key point to mention is that al-ihsan and goodness uh, that is related, the point that is related to ihsan and goodness is that hearts are naturally uh, dis uh, disposed to loving whoever does acts of righteousness towards them or with them. So if someone does something good towards you or uh, kindness towards you, a gesture of goodness, that our hearts are somehow inclined to do good for that particular person. As for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ihsan and goodness, uh, it is something that is continuous. It is not limited to a specific person or a group of people. Uh, it is not limited but it is something that is continuous and his benefaction and his kindness uh, is both inward and also something that manifests I itself as well. Uh, Allah tells us in Al-Quran, وَإِن تَعِدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا If you are to count the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will not be in a position to count the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And... There are some of those favors that is subtle in its nature and there are some that is quite evident and manifest in its nature. And if we are to think about the subtle and 
uh, uh, blessings and the ni'mah, uh, we will see that we cannot even repay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in no way or no form for that ni'mah. And there are those that are manifest in front of us and sometimes we turn our eyes away from Him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is gracious towards all. He's gracious towards the believers who uh, are some or believers who are obedient and also he is gracious towards uh, the disbelievers in some cases they are disobedient to God Almighty he he is gracious towards the, uh, those who embrace righteousness and try to align themselves with the teachings of Islam and he is gra gracious of those to those even those who deny his presence and uh, um, somehow disbelieve in his greatness and his Lordship. And this is something for us to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and his ihsan and his beneficence uh, is not showered upon a particular category of people but rather across his creation. It extends towards even the animals. Um, I will also want to mention at this particular point um, the fruits of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we love Allah, uh, subhanAllah, in the manner we ought to love Him, that we will see the fruits of that love manifest itself in so many different ways. In our behavior pattern, in our approach to life, and so forth. So for example, when a person have love, and when the love of Allah is established in your heart, when it's established in your heart, that you will see that this love appears on your limbs. You will see that subhanAllah, your behavior pattern changes. That you will find yourself engaging in acts of ihsan towards others. That you will love people who even wrong you. And that you will not have no place for hate and animosity in in your life and this is the effect that the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have on your limbs you will find yourself wanting to use uh, your limbs in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not in disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the the second uh, fruits that we would like to subhanallah um, highlight is that a person that has the love of Allah established in his or her heart, you will find that person obeying Allah. As one of the poets says, تَزْعَمُونَ حُبُّ اللَّهِ وَلَا تُعْتِي وَإِن كَانَ حُبُّكَ صَادِقًا لَأَتَعْتُهُ فَإِنَّ الْمُحِبَّ لِمَنْ يُحِبُّ مُتِيعٌ You claim that you love Allah, but yet you find yourself disobeying Him. For indeed, if your love for Him was genuine, you would have find yourself obeying Him. These are words of one of the Muslim point. So you will find yourself obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also you will have the energy, the zeal and the zest because to, to serve Him and to serve His creation, to serve Him and also to serve His creation. That you will covet, when you love Allah, you will covet uh, what pleases Him. And you will accept the qada and the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When things befall you, if you love Allah, you will accept his, his decree. You will not question the decree of Allah. Why this is happening to me? Why not him? Why is this happening to my family? That you will accept the qada of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, um, also, you will have the shawq liqa rabbuk. That you will have this yearn to meet him and to be with him that this worldly life would not mean anything to you because your primary focus is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you have love in, in your heart for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will see that you will flee away from people and you will flee towards Allah ilallah, and you will turn towards him you hasten towards him and not only that you will seek solitude in solitude through spiritual uh, spiritual retreats so you will isolate yourself from 
the eyes of people and from the material things and you will find some sort of comfort and sakina and tranquility by being isolated because uh, inshallah your heart is connected to him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also you will not be a person that is materialistic in nature you will not focus in this dunya but rather you will say in your dua Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana or Lord grant us good in this life but your primary focus wa fil akhirati hasana your primary focus will be the afterlife because you will know that this life is a temporary life and the afterlife is a life that is everlasting that does not have any end or have any form of limitation also when you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have the love of Allah established in your heart that you will love those whom He love. Allah love the prophets, Allah loves the wali of Allah, Allah love the people of ilm. That you will find yourself loving the prophets of Allah. You will find yourself loving the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The friends and the people of spirituality. You will find yourself loving the, the people of knowledge and ilm. Because they're close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also, you will find fadluhu uh, al akhirin That you will find that that person will have preference over others. In other words, that Allah will love them more than others. And you will see the vast difference between those who are loved by Allah and those who are not loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, there is the statement I would like to end with and that is the statement of Harith al-Muhasibi and Harith al-Muhasibi was from Iraq and he was basically a, a, a Zahid man of spirituality that denounced this dunya denounced this world and he says Mahabbatu maylika ila al-mahbubi bi kulliyatik thumma itharan lahu ala nasik wa zawjik wa malak ثم موافقتك له سرا وجهرا ثم ثم علمك بتقصيرك في حبه and this actually means love is that you completely submit yourself to the beloved you submit yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then preferring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over yourself over your wealth over your spouse and your family members then agreeing with him secretly and manifestly and then knowing your shortcomings in your love for him if you have love for him you will acknowledge your shortcomings you will acknowledge uh, your human nature and you will turn to him inshallah i pray that the love will put love in our hearts for him uh, the prophet sallallahu taught us of a dua in that dua, I'll end with this. Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbak wa hubbu man yuhibbak wa hubbu amalin uh, tuqarrib uh, ila hubbak. Well, I ask of thee for your love and the love of those who love thee and the love of every act that will draw us closer to thee. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa sa'iru al-mu'minun wa sa'iru al-mu'minin. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. May the peace and blessings of Allah be with all of you. This is Imam Safraz, Masjid al-Abideen, saying, Ramadan Kareem, Kullu Amin wa Antum Bi Khair.